All right, guys, what's going on? It's Simulate Addiction 22. Back at you with another video. And yes, this is part two. Um, I want to go ahead and start off where I left off at. And that obviously being um, the part where Undertaker and Kane created the first WWE Inferno match at Unforgiven in 1998, I believe. And that's this right here. You guys can see that Kane and, and the Undertaker are obviously um, combating in an Inferno match where I believe the Undertaker set Kane's arm on fire at that point in time. So, really good match. Um, if you guys haven't seen the match, um, definitely check it out on YouTube because I'm pretty sure they have it on there, so you can always check that out. Um, March 29th of 1998, um, Undertaker and Kane... Are fighting at their first WrestleMania match, which is right here. Um, it happens to be WrestleMania. I believe that, if I'm mistaken, XIV is. Um, I believe it's eleven. But I could not. I couldn't be too sure about it. It may end up just being fourteen. Actually, it might be actually WrestleMania fourteen. So I remember that. Um, fifteen was actually around. Dang. No, nah, it had to have been earlier. It had to have been early, early. But like I said, I don't know. But I just wanted to go. I just wanted to check that one out. But that was bef that was obviously um, before that one. But obviously, um, June ninth, June twenty ninth, nineteen ninety eight, Kane wins. Kane actually actually ends up winning his first WWF championship, um, beating Stone Cold Steve Austin in a uh, first blood match. Where the Undertaker actually gets involved, interferes, and cracks Stone Cold Steve Austin's skull open to cause him to bleed, which then gives Kane the uh, championship belt and ends up winning his first WWE major title. Um, let's see. Moving on, um, from July and from July to August, nineteen ninety-eight, um. Kane and Mankind obviously team up, and they win their first WWF Tag Team Championships. Um, I cannot remember who they ended up playing against. It could have been the APA. It could, yeah, I think it might have been them. Uh, like I said, I'm not too sure. I'm trying to remember much, but I can't remember too, too much of it. But that was his first time winning the, uh, the World Wrestling Federation Tag Team titles at that time, which was around 1998. Um, so, March 28, 1999 comes around, and obviously Kane ends up having this obsession with uh, Pete Rose at the time. Um, you can see it right here. Kane obviously takes off the chicken mask off of um, Pete Rose, and obviously his face is revealed. And then obviously Kane ends up attacking him, choke slamming him, tombstoning him, something like that, something like that. Um, it says here, Pete Rose just wouldn't learn his lesson, and this, I believe this, um, this, his obsession with Pete Rose has gone on since 1999, and I believe has been going on until, I'm trying to think, so I want to say it could have been 19, not 19, but, um, yeah, about 2000, about 2000. Around 2000, yeah, so it was like a one-year thing that ended up going on. Um, after that, it kind of just stopped from there. Um, but I'm sure he still has that same obsession with them, so I'm not too sure if it's done. But that has just gone on for like a year or so. That was actually a good – I like that um, That part of his career that he's gone through. So um, August 23rd of 1999, um, X-Pac actually teams with Kane. For the first time, they become good friends, really good close friends, and that's pretty much Kane's first and only friend that he's actually had in his wrestling career, just as this character. Um, they um, team up on Raw with uh, Kane's signature Pyro, and for the first time ever, Kane is actually able to speak without the voice box. So, very a really good accomplishment for Kane, obviously. And believe it or not, they ended up winning the Tag Team Championships. Both him and um, X Pac. So around 
June 23rd of 2003. Um, within the six years that has passed, Kane actually was unmasked for losing the World Championship match against uh, Triple H. Um, Evolution obviously was, you know, created before this time. So it was around 2000, actually around, yeah, around 2000, yeah, about 2003, around the time. Yeah, I think that's when Evolution was starting. It might have been 2002, like late 2002, possibly. But um, believe it or not, Kane actually wanted, Kane actually wanted to get unmasked. Believe it or not, um, I um, can't remember when, not when, but I can't remember where I saw it at, but it was somewhere online. Um, he was actually talking to the, um, well, I guess like, I don't want to say the creators, but more so of the people who actually come up with the storylines and stuff. So he was talking to them and he, you know, he was telling them, I guess, about how uncomfortable the mask man made him feel. So he kind of wanted to go ahead and just, you know, lose the match, um, get unmasked, and then from there on, lead on to another um, storyline in his career, which ended up becoming even more better. After the match, he lost from a uh, Triple H to lose the world title. He then on um, goes to chokeslam RVD, Rob Van Dam. Um, and then apparently he goes on to be this psychotic, sinister monster. So that was a good um, turn in his career. Really great. Really, really, really great. Um, Then July 14th of 2003, um, Kane had an interview with Jim Ross, and at that point in time, he actually set Jim Ross on fire, as you can see, and I'm sure most of you guys have seen it. Um, it says here, um, my character at his most sinister, forcing Jim Ross to feel his pain on Raw. So, um, a good turn on him. Still the sinister monster that still is... Here with him, obviously, and always will be every time he enters, enters the WWE ring. Um, July 28, 2003, one of the most terrifying is when Kane makes his, I guess, like, makes his debut with the, um, without the mask and just has the little towel over his head and has shackles on his feet and shackles on his hands and is escorted by officers or enforcers. Um, so it says... Here, uh, one of the most terrifying and awesome entrances of my career on Raw, shackled and flanked by the police department with a taser aimed at my back. Um, definitely, like I said, definitely one of the most awesomest and terrifying entrances, entrances that he actually had. Um, definitely a good character for him, becoming the sinister monster. Um, obviously, at that point in time, um, he obviously has... No rights, no wrongs. He just goes and does whatever he wants. Uh, from there on, from November 16, 2003, um, he ends up having a feud with uh, Vince McMahon's son, Shane McMahon. And it says here, Shane McMahon and I brutalized each other in this ambulance match at Survivor Series of 2003 and throughout our infamous rivalry. He is one of the toughest men I know. Um, definitely a good, good wrestler, Shane McMahon. Um, uh, from what I know, I believe, um, Kane ended up winning that match. I think, I think Kane ended up winning that match and, um, putting Shane McMahon in the ambulance and escorting him out the building. So that was a good match. And then during that time, um, The Undertaker returned to fight Kane at Survivor Series of 2003. Um, ended up burying his brother alive again, which says right here, um, at Survivor Series, burying my brother alive again. So not only did Kane, um, beat Shane McMahon in a match, in an ambulance match, he ended up fighting his brother in, um, in a, what's it called? Buried Alive match. So definitely brutal. Definitely a brutal match there. Um. From there on, uh, 2004, Kane ends up having a storyline with uh, Lita and Matt Hardy. 
um, which ended up leading to SummerSlam, where Kane ended up beating Matt Hardy, and actually, um, Kane gets to marry Lita, and they are here at the altar, about to propose to each other. Um, if you guys haven't seen this, definitely check it out on YouTube because they do have it on there. And it says here, um, Lita is coursed into saying I do to the big red monster on Raw. Isn't she thrilled? Um, Matt does end up um, interfering in their wedding. Um, from there, um, you know, beats up Kane, twists the face him. Matt and Leader are um, going up the ramp to try to escape. Ends up, Kane ends up flaming up. The um, you know, his pyro comes up to where they um, they can't leave. So then, then Kane walks up the ramp to beat up Matt Hardy, choke slams him off the stage into the table, and then um, leaves the arena with Lita by carrying her out the building. Um, from then. Um, Edge and Kane end up having a feud, and Edge ends up marrying Lita right here. If you see this picture right here, after Kane tombstones the priest, which is another successful accomplishment he had in his career. It says here, um, June 20, 2005, jilted by Lita for Edge, Kane takes the high road on Raw and chokes Lame as a priest, tombstones, tombstones him, and obviously the wedding is not obviously wasn't the wedding actually what didn't go it didn't happen so next one is um 2006 when kane stars in his very first movie see no evil um obviously his character is jacob goodnight it says here my other demonic alter ego jacob goodnight on the set of see no evil so another good accomplishment for him. Um, the movie was a good success. I actually liked it. Um, if you like horror, sinister, demonic type movies, um, this is definitely a good movie to see if you are a big fan of Glenn Jacobs. And if you guys, excuse me for one minute. <clears throat> Sorry, I need some water. Um, all right, so from there on, um, 2007, well, actually, let me rephrase that. From 2006, um, there was another storyline where Kane encounters his, um, uh, his, I guess, like, his, I was gonna say doppelganger, but I can't even say that, but more of his, like, his past, and, um, this imposter Kane comes about, and... It wasn't as good as I hoped, but it was still somewhat it was somewhat decent at most. Um at that point, um Kane ends up going through this whole May nineteenth situation where he gets to his mind and then the imposter Kane makes his debut and beats Kane at Vengeance of two thousand six. Um from there on, two thousand seven, two thousand eight, two thousand nine not much is gone. I'm sure there has been much going on, but not from what I not I just can't remember it off the top of my head. But um around July eighteenth of two thousand ten, Money in the Bank is previewed and Kane wins the Money in the Bank match and defeats Rey Mysterio for the world heavyweight title. Um, it says here, at Money in the Bank, starting my first and only reign with the classic World Heavyweight Championship, made famous by yours truly, the 16-time World Heavyweight Champion, the Nature Boy, Ric Flair. Uh, from there on, um, his feud with The Undertaker still remained, where he ended up fighting The Undertaker. Um, I can't remember where it was, but Kane ended up beating The Undertaker for the World Heavyweight title, and... From there on to uh, September 3rd, 2012. Actually, let me rephrase that. Hold up. Um, from 2011, um, Kane, I guess, kind of took a break from the WWE for a while. I don't know if he had an injury or some sort. Can't remember exactly when. But um, around 2012, where um, the Slammy Awards were going on and John Cena and Mark Henry were um, fighting, 
during the match, Kane made his historic return back with the um with the mask. Um, the Iron Man mask as well. Um, pretty pretty interesting. Loved it. Um, choke slammed John Cena, and from there on, his feud with John Cena continued. Um, let's see, John Cena and uh, Zack Ryder and Eve Torres ended up having a storyline going on. Um, John Cena kissed Eve Torres. Zack Ryder got upset. John Cena lost a good friend and obviously didn't really appreciate what she did to him. So from there on out, um, from September 3rd, 2012, um, Kane teams up with Daniel Bryan, hugging it out with them on Raw. Um, you see right here, they ended up teaming up, creating the team of Team Hell No, which they ended up winning the WWE Tag Team Championships. Um, says here, hugging it out with uh, Daniel Bryan on Raw to the delight of the WWE Universe. Um, very good team. Love the team. They obviously didn't look like they seen eye to eye, but they obviously was a, they were a good team. Um, from there on out, um, they ended up having a storyline where both Daniel Bryan and Kane had um, anger issues and went to anger management class of uh, Dr. Shelby's. Um, they're definitely a good storyline. I actually like that. Um, Kane, Daniel Bryan, and AJ Lee. Definitely a good storyline, good feud going on there. Um, says here, January 21st, 2013, Team Friendship, better known as Team Hell No, graduates Dr. Shelby's anger management class on Raw. Um, you can see it right here. Um, they do have the um, episode on Raw on YouTube of Kane and Daniel Bryan both attending the um, anger management class. So you guys can always check that out too as well. Um, after that, um, December 2nd, 2014, during, during, doing the authorities bidding on SmackDown as WWE's director of operations, Kane was direct, Kane was, um, awarded doctor of, op, director of operations by, uh, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. So there you see Kane in his corporate suit doing his, uh, corporate duties as director of operations. From there on, um... September 21st, 2015, Kane and uh, Seth Rollins ended up having a feud as well. And at this point in time, um, I can't remember. No, it wasn't even a match. Actually, it was a match against, uh, I think it was a match against John Cena for the United States title. Um, Kane came out through the ring and obviously dragged Seth, Seth Rollins to the, um, to the abyss, which is obviously... And ends up being the bottom of the the ring. So it says here, um, September twenty first, twenty fifteen, the demon returns to Raw to drag Seth Rollins to hell. So, um, good match. Um, obviously that feud ended up going and running to I think twenty sixteen, twenty seventeen, or something like that. Um, it might have just happened after um Seth Rollins defeated Kane for the WWE world heavyweight title but um anyways um from that point um here's a picture of glenn jacobs his mother joan and his brother brian and this is i believe taken in 2005 and then oh no, no that's that's not the mother that's his uh, sister my fault his sister becky so Brian, Becky, and then Glenn Jacobs himself. Um, it says here, my brother Brian, Becky, and me in 2005 at mom and dad's 50th wedding anniversary. So obviously it was a breathtaking experience of all three of them being at their parents' wedding. Definitely something to remember. Definitely something to remember. Um, this was 2018 when the election night came around. Um, as you can see, this is Kane and his um, his wife and his daughter. Um, it says here, my wife Crystal and me with our gra granddaughter Madison on election night in 2018. Um, definitely a good, definitely something to remember right there, especially because Kane was elected as um, mayor. Um, so obviously you can see... Um, the next 
next picture is um I know it's hard to see a little bit, but you can see Glenn Jacobs again and the Nature Boy Ric Flair. Um, both of them with their wives. Um, obviously Kane's wife, uh, Crystal, and then Nature Boy's wife, uh, Wendy. Says here, me and Crystal with Nature Boy Ric Flair and his wife Wendy Barlow at a campaign fundraiser in 2018. Definitely a good picture, obviously. Great, great picture. Um Obviously, the next picture is um, Glenn Jacobs with um, Judge Andrew P. Napolitano, which became a major influence on his career in 2018 when he became uh, mayor of Knox County, Tennessee, which is right here. Um, let's see. Oh, God. So here's Glenn Jacobs in his, uh, in his little his car <laughs> that's not his car actually it's just um i guess like a custom car for him since he became a uh, mayor of knox county they gave him this and then obviously knowing kane or glenn jacobs being the seven foot guy that he is is ridiculous and then for him to squeeze in that's just funny um it says here squeezing all seven feet of me into a smart car to hit the campaign trail in 2018, the dinosaurs in the background are proof that you never know what to expect when campaigning. Um, oh, the dino. Okay, I was looking at. I was looking. And I can. I can actually see the dinosaurs. So I don't know if you can see it, but it's literally right, right near. If you see the window, you see near the window that right there. That's a dinosaur, and it's hard to see. And I'm sorry. Trying to make it easy for you guys to see it. I don't know if you guys can see it, but yeah. It was a dinosaur in the background. Um, the next picture is um Glenn Jacobs, um, Tim Burchett, and obviously another WWE superstar who currently is still wrestling, uh Rusev. So yeah, you see this picture this picture right here. These three guys. Um says here, outgoing mayor, now congressman Tim Burchett on the right side with me and uh, WWE superstar Rusev. Uh, Burchett declared it Rusev Day in Knox County at a 2018 campaign event. So definitely another memorial, another mem memorable um, moment to remember, obviously. So it's definitely a good plus for uh, Glenn Jacobs becoming the mayor at this time. Um, the next picture is um, Glenn Jacobs with um, Ron Paul and Lisa Kennedy Montgomery, and these I think both of them. I don't know. If, I don't know if it's both of them, but it's one of them on the uh, that actually star in the Fox Business Network. So I believe it's one of them. I can't remember. So actually, it's uh, Lisa Kennedy Montgomery. It says right here, it says, generally starstruck in 2019 with Lisa Kennedy Montgomery of the Fox Business Network and my political hero, Ron Paul. So it's this picture right down at the bottom. These guys right here. So you see Glenn Jacobs, Lisa Kennedy Montgomery, and then Ron Paul. So definitely a good picture. Definitely a good picture and uh, another memorable moment to remember. Um, Glenn Jacobs definitely had a good run, and I would definitely say that he is of all the the best person in the whole world. Um just to me. I don't know how everybody else feels, but I'm definitely adding it adding it to my um bucket list if possible to actually go and see Glenn Jacobs uh one time in uh, Knox County, Tennessee. Um I don't know when, but it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a while. I'm gonna just say that because I have to make sure I get my money straightened out first. Um but anyways I got two more for you guys, and then we're gonna go ahead and get straight into straight into the cosplay. I don't want to waste too much time. So um, here's another picture of a uh, is a is another picture of uh, Glenn Jacobs, his wife Crystal, and uh, Senator Rand Paul. Um, it says here, Crystal and I was Senator Rand Paul, who endorsed my campaign for mayor in 2019. So. Um, Definitely give a big shout out to Senator Rand Paul for um helping Kane or Glenn Jacobs with his uh, campaign for becoming mayor in 2019. Definitely a good moment right there for him. Um, 
And then lastly, um, this is his family. That's Glenn Jacobs' family right there. So you see Glenn Jacobs there, his wife, um, he, brothers, his brother, his sister, his uh, his daughter, and then I guess I think his uncle. Does, does he have an uncle? No, no. So it's just the Jacobs family left to right. Uh, Clint, Devon, me, Crystal, Madison, Artista, Cooper, and Corey. Um, big big happy family. Um. Definitely want to say that he has a good, he has a really awesome family. Um, definitely a lot of people. Um, definitely say a lot more than what I have because uh, I have like eight people, but I'm sure that's pretty much the same amount right there that's in this picture. And I'm just looking at it right now. And it's actually eight, eight adults, not eight adults, but um, six, six adults. And then you have two kids. So definitely something worth. All right, so that covers the end of that. Um, like I said, if you guys want to get a copy of this book, make sure you pick it up at Target, pick it up at WWEShop.com, or any other website on the internet. Find it, buy it. Get yourself a good discount, and make sure you pick yourself up a book while supplies last and before. It runs out. Um, like I said, it's a really good book. And like I said, I'm a big fan of Glenn Jacobs myself. So getting this book is actually something that means a whole lot to me. A whole lot to me. Because I've looked up to him since he started debuting in 1997. But um, I didn't start watching it until 1999. Um, still loved his um whole costume. His um, Yeah, I know you guys can see my, um, my ring shining. And my earrings as well. Um, I don't really don't do too much gold, but I do like silver a lot. But anyways, yeah, I'm a big fan of Glenn Jacobs. Started watching wrestling around 1999. I was still young at the time, but loved watching it, enjoyed watching it. And Glenn Jacobs was one of those people that I've actually looked up to as a wrestler. Great design, big big dude, and obviously he was a demonic type of character, which I really enjoyed. Really enjoyed him and The Undertaker. Definitely a great, great combination to have in the WWE. And they did a lot. So give them their props on that. So now, if you guys give me one minute, I'm about to go get this package. And I'm going to show you guys the cosplay suit that I just got. All right, so obviously FedEx Express. And believe it or not, I don't work at FedEx Express, but I do work at FedEx Ground. So this this is something that we don't get, but um, I could I could say that I don't I could say that I do get discounts on this stuff, but I actually don't. Um, the only thing I actually get discounts on is the um, the costume itself. Um, the only reason I bought this is because um, they had a Black Friday sale going on, and I definitely wanted to get mine in for sure. So I got me a discount on the suit, and I ended up getting it for at least a hundred and seventeen dollars. So definitely not a bad price, especially for a good quality suit. So with that in mind, let's open this bad boy up. And just to let you guys know, I don't need scissors. <laughs> um, still working on my uh, movie script for sure. So um, I'm going to try to get that started. Um, try to actually get that started up tomorrow if possible. Especially while I got time on my hands. So that takes care of that bag. And here it is. Here is the bag that we got. And yes. Love the design on the bag. Um, Definitely love it. I'm trying to remember what they had the very first time that I started buying from Heroes Time. Um, I want to say I think it was just like a clear bag. Like it didn't have the, um, like the little printed branded logo on here. But I love, I like how they did it on here. It's really awesome. Loved it, loved it, loved it. So what we're going to do is go through everything and then get to the cosplay suit, get to everything. And then I have one more thing to show you because this goes right with this suit. And we're going to um, we're gonna put it on and then you guys can actually see it for yourself. So we're, we're going to get through the, uh, the needy greedy, the important stuff first. 
So obviously, you've seen this before. Obviously, when you buy something from Heroes Time, you write a review, you share your happiness, you write a review, you get a $5 bonus. Um, obviously, you have to have an account on uh, HeroesTime.com. It's fairly easy. Obviously, it's free. You don't pay anything. Um, once you sign up, you actually get um, you get points, and um, don't really think that goes towards anything, if I'm not mistaken. But anyways, um, it says here the steps you have to take to get the five dollar bonus. I know it's hard to see a little bit. But I'm going to read it off to you guys so you guys can understand what you have to do. So once you um, once you get this and you're getting your um, you're getting your cosplay suit all good to go, what you want to do is um, go to go to the HeroesTime.com website, click on the product that you ordered. If you didn't buy a cosplay suit on there. Um, you don't really have to worry too much about it. Um, um, trying to think, yeah, there's not really much you can do on there if you don't, if you don't buy the suits on there, but like I said, it's really not that much, but nothing's better than getting $5, especially for a good bonus on a suit that you bought. So what you want to do, like I said, is click on the product that you ordered. Once you do that, you click reviews. You fill in the table at you fill in the table as requirements, and then you upload your picture or video. Um, I'm pretty sure you could probably do both, but yeah, either your pictures or your videos, depending on the videos. Um, it's probably only going to be one or two. Definitely just do one, and then it doesn't matter the amount of pictures you put on there. Um, after that, you are to enter a code in, and once you do that, you click continue, and then wait for your check, and then you get your bonus easily. Um, so the way that you upload your photos or videos is they give you, it should be like, it looks something like this. If you look here at the very bottom, it says right here, it says, um, images, upload multiple images. And then you, um, you find out, you find the folder that you have for your images and then you just put it in there. And then as well as your video, your, um, your URL, put it in here. And then once you do that, you click um, continue. And then once you do that, you are all good. You uh, do your ratings, whether you're um, what you thought the uh, quality of the suit, the durability of the suit, the thickness of the suit, whatever it is that you like to rate your suits upon, whether it was customer service too as well. You rate it whether it was bad or whether you think it was good, whether you think it was neutral, whether you think it was eh, decent, or whether you think it was Eh, really, really all that good. Um, it says here tips is it says several products which shipped together could only got once reward. But yeah, that's the whole um review thing. If you want to get five dollar bonuses, this is what you do. You got to write a review for the costume suit, costume or suit that you purchased. Um, definitely take a picture, do a video, whatever you want to do, upload it up on HarrisTime.com. Make sure you get an account. Once you do that, you are set to go. Once you do everything in the table that is required for you to fill in, make sure you do that. And that way you get your $5 bonus. Um, next is this little, I guess, I don't know if it's like a sticker. It looks like it could be. But it could be just a piece of paper, but I want to say I think it is a sticker. I can't remember how many times, I can't remember how many of these I've actually gotten. Like I said, I don't really know what it is exactly. Um, obviously, there's a QR code here that you obviously, um, that you obviously scan. And I guess you get something. I don't know what it is because I've never done it before, so I don't know exactly what it is but anyways that's done right there so now we can jump into the suit the thing that you have all been waiting for um so the cosplay suit that i ended up purchasing was not on harold's time what i did was i went to a certain website i got the pattern file for the uh the spider-man suit that i actually wanted to get i went to harold's time i um Asked them if they could print this off and actually start sewing it, making the suit, 
and they were fine with it, and then therefore I um got the suit. So the suit that I got was something obviously not original and not basic. So um I'm sure you guys are well aware of the many Spider-Mans in the universe or in Spider-Verse. Um and one of them is the Scarlet Spider. Not the one with the blue hoodie, but the more evil, I guess like evil one because of its black and red color. The Kane Parker Scarlet Spider suit. Um not the original one, but the symbiote suit. Um really interested in how everything came out like i said we're going to go through the details of every bit of it because this looks interesting and let me just say it i was excited when i got this in super excited um definitely love i'm really loving loving the color of the suit um okay i was about to i was about to get upset real quick i'm so sorry because when i just when i Oh, this actually smells really good. It smells like it's been brand. It's actually brand new. But like I was saying, I was literally about to get mad because I didn't know if they put um, the uh, face mask, not the face mask, but the mask. I didn't know if they put the mask in here, and I asked for that, but I wanted it detached. So here is the suit itself. Um, I know it's a little hard to see because it's not much light, but like I said. It smells really good too. Like I said, um, you'll definitely see more of this at the Comic Con when I actually wear it. Um, I love, 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 love. Really love the uh, the color of it. Love the design on it. And um, let me go ahead and try to put some more light on it real quick if it helps you guys a lot. That way you guys can see it more clearly. There you go. Now you can see it more clearly. This is what the suit looks like. All right, that's the front of the suit. Um, we're going to run to the arms real quick. Um, definitely love the design on it. Um, and most people, I don't know if you've noticed, but this actually looks more like a cane suit. Literally looks more like a cane suit. Looks more like a cane suit is what I meant to say. Um, because of the red and black um, colors, obviously. And then you got the, the streaks going through. So it looks more of a fiery type of suit and like i said it looks just it looks almost like canes just because of the color and everything on it um so yeah love the design on it um i love the details in the suit like it's really really good um yes i had ended up getting the crotch zipper so that way i could always go and use the bathroom if i ever wear this um one place i'm actually not going to try to wear this at is disney because Believe it or not, I know you guys are aware of it, but they don't let you wear masks. They really don't let you wear masks, and I understand why. But it's like, uh, it just doesn't, it just doesn't, it's not right. It's just not right. You have to have the mask if you're wearing a Spider Man suit. It just does not feel right. It's like my identity is literally just being released all throughout the city because apparently I can't wear the mask. But, anyways, here's the back of the suit. So the same design on the back as well. Um, really love it. Love how they did it. Everything is perfectly well designed. There is literally nothing on here that I don't like at all. Um, let me go ahead and, and go to the pants. <clears throat> so obviously you see the shoes. Shoes are well made. Love it, love it, love it. Um, obviously my size... My size is 12.5 or 13. I chose 12.5 because 13s are kind of loose on my feet. But I know with a 12.5, I can at least have some room to uh, move my feet around to where it's not like super loose. So definitely awesome. I love it. Um, like I said, this was definitely well worth getting. And obviously, I have the face mask right here. And for the first time, I actually didn't get any eye holes. And the only reason why is because I have the face shell for it, which is what I was showing you guys in my um, one of my other videos when I was showing you guys the masks that I have. And it was the Spider-Man mask. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and 
show you guys what the suit looks like with it on. So, if you guys give me a minute, I will get everything situated. Actually, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna just do the suit, but I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the mask later. I'm gonna do the mask later. Yeah, I have to do the mask later because I have to do the eye holes and stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do the whole thing later, but I'm gonna just show you what the suit looks like with it on. And then what we'll do is the next day I will actually do the whole thing. Well, um, I'll cosplay the whole thing for you guys so you guys can see it all. But nonetheless, let me go ahead and put this uh cosplay suit on so you guys can see everything that I have. So give me one minute. All right, guys, I'm back, and it looks fantastic. Um, there we go. Looks fantastic. Like, the durability of the suit is just beyond awesome. Um, like looking at the design of this, uh, the suit is astounding. Um, really not much worse than I could say, but simply amazing very symbiotic um obviously this takes a big turn on the scarlet spider and becomes the symbiote i guess when um either venom i guess either venom or carnage uh, i can't really couldn't really tell which one the symbiote would relate to but i guess it could be either or but yes so you can see the spider logo here that the scarlet spider still has um stand up a little bit so you guys can see um just show the arms real quick so you guys can see that um obviously what you see right there is my um my rings that i still have on um obviously when i go to the comic con i'm not gonna have them on because it definitely feels a little awkward with it so um i didn't realize that till after i put it on i was like oh great that's not good but yeah love the like i absolutely love the color of the suit um, the color runs well through the suit. It looks amazing. Um, you can see the um, part of the hand. The symbiote still runs through each and every part of the suit. As well as this side. You can see that as well. And obviously every other part running through his suit as well. Standing up. Um, give me a minute. Let me adjust that right quick. So you guys can see some more of the suit um like i said um actually actually yeah okay so you can see a little you can see most of it here and then you can see some of it running through there like i said it literally literally looks like a cane suit like the lines everything runs through it just like Kane's suit does. Um, yeah, no, as you can see, I got big thighs. But who cares? And then, let me get to the back part of the suit. Let me just get on my knees. So I'm rolling the suit. So you guys can see the spider logo on the back, just like the Scarlet Spider has still. You see the symbiote lines running through the back part on there as well. See that? Oh. See that part as well. Actually, give me one minute, actually. There you go. Now you can see more of the suit itself. So, looks pretty fascinating. Like, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah, like, you can literally see everything on here. Um, literally looks amazing. So, you can see the back part of the suit here. Um... Like I said, it's awesome. So, what I'm going to do is 
the next video I'm actually going to um, do the eye holes and stuff and then I can actually um, get that all set ready and then we can put the suit back on and then we can actually get the full picture of the Spider-Man Scarlet Spider symbiote suit that was well waited for. Like, the lines just make the suit a whole lot more better. Um, like I said, I will be uh, sharing pictures as well so you guys can see it on my social media if you guys would like to. Um, definitely send it through there so you guys can see it. Um, have it through Instagram, Facebook. Um, definitely have it through, um, I might do it through Twitter too as well, possibly. And then possibly Snapchat. Don't count me on that, but mostly Instagram and Facebook, possibly for the most part. So that is the Scarlet Spider symbiote suit. And I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I have because this is awesome. And I'm pretty sure I showed you guys the mask. Yeah, this is the mask. No eye holes, no nothing. Just how I wanted it because I wanted to go ahead and do it myself. Because the last time I let them do that, they obviously messed up on the eye holes. And it looked like I had like four, like two extra eyes up here where it's supposed to be down lower. So I'm going to do it myself and I can actually get it right. So um, I'm going to do that later on tomorrow so you guys won't miss a thing. So hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. And make sure you guys subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Come join the symbiotic army of Spider-Man lovers who love and enjoy what I do here on YouTube as well as the fun stuff that I do here as well. And we are going to be doing more fun stuff here on YouTube as well. So don't think I'm not going to just do cosplays and um, taste tests. Like, I'm going to literally do games and stuff. You'll probably hear me rage and probably laugh and all that good stuff. But anyways, yes, I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. And I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Peace.